Well, yesterday, the Kansas City Mavericks announced that they've hired Florida Everblades associate coach Tad O'Han to become their next head coach. He sat down with me yesterday for a Zoom one on one interview. Florida Everblades consistently great in the ECHL um, and also in your tenure as well. I, if I'm correct, four division championships and a conference championship within your years there, correct? Yeah. Um, you know, they have an established culture of winning. How, you know, do you leave an organization that's successful and bring that culture of consistent winning here to a place like Kansas City? Yeah, that's, that's the million dollar question. And you know what? It's a process. It's a process of going to work every single day and, and, and grinding away. It's a process of identifying the right talent and identifying the right people that are going to be a part of the solution, not part of the problem. It's understanding that when we hit adversity, that we've got to, we've got to bear down and bury through it. Um, I'm a big believer that adversity introduces us to ourselves, And when you have the right culture, those teams hit adversity and they'll battle through it. Um, I believe that Kansas City has all of the intangibles and the foundation to be a phenomenal powerhouse in the ECHL. It's going to take hard work. It's going to take the right players and personnel, uh, but I believe that we can do it. You told me earlier that you talked to some of your former players that have played here, but have you touched base with anyone who is currently a staple on, on this current roster? Yes, I, I started reaching out to all of the players. Um, I've continued to chip away at that, and I will I'll finish calling all of those players uh, probably uh, tomorrow evening um, into the early parts of Saturday, uh, just touching base with them, introducing myself to them, talking to them, making sure that their families and them are healthy, staying safe, um, and then just getting to know them. And, uh, you know, I let them know, hey, this is my number. Feel free to text me anytime. I'm going to stay in contact with you kind of every week, every other week. And, and let's really talk about, you know, what your plans are and what our plans are. And let's, let's, uh, let's, let's find the, the right direction. Obviously you get some uh, returning guys here. And of course, parent clubs sending t people down, but in terms of your recruiting, a little bit of a difficult situation here because you were, as you said before, with a different team kind of looking for those needs. Now you're coming here to a place where, you know, you're just trying to get settled. But on top of that, there's no major junior active games right now. The Frozen Four canceled. So how does this really change, um, you know, your, your recruiting atmosphere heading into your first season as a head coach? Yeah, you know what? It's, um, I, feel, I feel for some of the uh, college seniors that their, their season was shortened. And then, of course, the major junior guys that couldn't go into the playoffs because that's when they really get more eyes on them. Um, with that said, it's all about building the list, creating the list, having contacts. Um, since um, this pandemic has started, I, I've spoken with every college coach in the country, um, you know, and so a lot of phone calls, um, a lot of Excel spreadsheets, um, speaking to a lot of scouts, basically just getting an understanding and continuing to learn about who's the right fit. Um, because when it comes to signing players, we're, we're going to get after it right away. This is an adjustment for you no matter what, but dealing with everything that's going on with the coronavirus pandemic, you know, how much more difficult does that make the transition? First off, the entire Mavericks organization has been phenomenal to me. Uh, they've understood the situation that we're in. Um, and if it really wasn't for their support and how they've treated me, uh, this would be overwhelming. Um, so I, I can't even begin to say thank you enough. You know, with all things, we, we only can control so many things. Um, and one of the things that I talk to our players about is you control your efforts and you control your attitudes. And that's really all that you can control. Um, you know what? Currently, we have no control over this pandemic other than staying inside, staying safe, doing the things, to the precautions. Um, but with that said, it's allowing me to spend a lot of time in the home office, um, a lot of time getting prepared, and that preparedness will only help in the future. Um, I suspect, I mean, right now, we would have been, you know, closing out the first round of the playoffs, you know. And so instead, you know what, we're hammering out recruiting lists, talking about game schedules, talking about travel, talking about, you know, what we can do to modify the locker room or the weight room and how we can put the best product on the ice. And so we're going to take that kind of silver lining 
and just use that extra time to really get dialed in, prepared, and put the best product on the ice. Hopefully things will be somewhat back to normal by October. How excited are you, you know, to just really be here for your first puck drop? Yeah, you know what? Uh, very excited. And I think with everything going on, it just magnifies that. I, I think, you know, that first night when you see the fans in the stands and, and you see, you know, guys ready to go, I, I think it, it'll almost be overwhelming. There's nothing like a live hockey game and, and, and nothing like, you know, the Orange Army, Mav Country supporting, you know, a great product on the ice. And so uh, it'll be very grateful and uh, our players will be excited because they've had a lot of time off and they'll be ready to go. All righty. Well, thank you so much for your time. Welcome to Kansas City. I look forward to actually meeting you in real life. <laughs> thank you very much. All the best. Stay safe.